Hey y'all, this is Joe out here at St. Bernard Acres. I want to welcome you to the channel. Welcome back, subscribers. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, do me a favor. Slide down there and hit that button now. And uh, you won't regret it. Become a subscriber. Hit that bell so you know when I put other things up. Because it's getting pretty regular. Alright. So I thought what I would do while I was out here, I came out here today... Uh, this is March 30th, and the only reason I made the trip out here is to take care of Creamer. Where'd he go? There he is. Creamer, say hi. <laughs> um, but I had turned the heater off. I thought, you know, spring was here. But evidently, <laughs> we're going to get not just snow flurries tomorrow night, but they're talking now measurable snow. Uh, so, I had to come out here and turn the heat on for him, because it's going to be lows, you know, in the 20s. And, I'll turn the heat on, come out here Saturday and turn it off. Um, but I thought while I was out here, I've got a lot of new subscribers, and a lot of people asking about my solar system. I've had it running now for just under eight months, and I figured I'd do a little overview of it, explain it to everybody. And let you know how it's working. So let's get into that. The these are four 250 watt solar panels that uh, I bought used from uh, Santan Solar. There's links to all this stuff down in the description. Uh, pretty much everything I'm going to go through. But it's a thousand watts of solar, which you know this is a cabin. This is a weekend cabin. I don't live in it full time. So I don't need, you know, this gigantic solar array or anything. A thousand is more than what I need, but I had them, so I did it. Uh, and these panels were so good, I've got six more of them sitting in the shed at home. <laughs> um, so what I've done, I've wired them in series. Those two are in a series. Those two are in a series. These are 24 volt panels. So now they're 48 volts. Instead of two 24 volt, 250 watt panels, that's now one 48 volt, 500 watt panel. Same as that there. Those are wired in parallel. Those two sets are wired in parallel and it's 8WG, 8AWG wire running along. I'm going to be putting this, uh, now that everything's working great and exactly how I want it, we're going to be digging a little trench here and running these underground in conduit. But they run all the way under the cabin to the back side to where they come into the cabin. And uh, I'll show you why here directly. So as we come into the cabin, you have to excuse the mess. I can't get creamer to clean it up. Um, this is the brains of everything. <laughs> so let me get in position here and I'll explain what all these pieces are. So my wires, my eight AWG, from the solar panels come in the negative goes to this bus bar the positive runs across into this circuit breaker it's on a I believe a 30 amp I can't see it but <laughs> what is that 20 amp because um, my panels are less than 20 amps so it's on that circuit breaker. If something happens, it gets hit by electric or something, who knows. That will trip that breaker and not destroy the rest of my solar system. So that goes through a 20 amp breaker. That's a midnight solar. I think they call that a baby box. Um, midnight baby or some kind of crap. But I bought all. I bought this box and the two breakers I have it from the Alt-E store. 
uh, alt e.com but you can get them on amazon or you can get them on ebay um, i just happen to go through there but the positive wire runs into that breaker box out of the breaker box into my charge controller this is a 60 amp um charge controller it does 12 24 48 volts and at 48 volts this can handle up to i think 3000 watts of solar um that's i would have to look it's been a while but that's the charge controller right there then now it leaves the charge controller the negative leaves the charge controller, goes to um, my bar, bus bar down here. The positive goes into this breaker box to the, you see that double pole, that double breaker there, that's 100 amp. It goes from that 100 amps over to the positive bus bar. So, <laughs> that's coming out of the charge controller, into the breaker, to the positive bus bar. I've got negative, bus. everything is wired into the bus bars. And that eliminates a lot of uh, having to run multiple wires out to the batteries and multiple wires coming in from the batteries. Everything's done on the breaker bars, which is convenient. So... Now we're out of the charge controller, we're over to here. This negative, big cable, goes from the negative bus bar up to the inverter. That's a 1200 watt pure sine wave inverter. And that's, this is a shunt for a meter that I'll explain here in a minute. That's all that is, just the shunt. So, you go from the bus bar negative to the inverter. The positive comes in, and, you know, that's from the battery. You can see it's going through the wall. The, the big wires, let's see, where am I? There they are, going through the walls to the battery. Um, the positive from the battery comes in and goes into the bus bar as well. That's also on the bus bar. So, what's happening with this positive side, it comes up, goes through this cutoff switch. So I can turn the inverter power off if I ever need to, you know, work on the inverter, change the inverter or whatever. Um, I can kill the power to the inverter. The idea is you got to have these safety features so that you can, you know, isolate things. And that's what the breakers are for. I can turn off solar going to the charge controller. I can turn off power from the charge controller going to the batteries. I can turn off power from the batteries to the inverter, you know, all of that. But that is on my po positive bus bar. Goes through this switch to a 100 amp ANL uh, fuse, just more protection. And the positive goes into the inverter. It's a 24 volt inverter. Um, 1200 watt pure sideway. That's all I needed. So that's the basics of it. That gets you from. The solar panels, to the charge controller, to the battery, to the inverter. There is your solar system. Now, what I've got here, this little meter is attached to the positive, going up to the um, inverter. It can go anywhere on a positive line, and to the shunt, both sides of the shunt. So what this will tell me is how much juice is in the batteries, how much I have, and how much I'm using. So right now at the moment, my fridge is running. Or no, I've got batteries charging. 
<laughs> so it's using a little bit of power. Um, that 14,000 watts, 14 kilowatts, that's what it used since the last time it was reset. But that's all that is, is just an extra meter. I mean, I get a meter off of here that shows me what's in my batteries. Um, 27.9. If you notice, that matches that. But for some reason, it doesn't match what's on the inverter. It always says something different. But, yeah, my batteries are great. They're in flow right now, so everything's perfect. Um, so, get my thumb finger out of the way. So, what this is, this is, a again, a 24-volt system. Well, I run, I'm going to install 12-volt lighting and 12-volt USB ports in this cabin. One of the things I need to do, then, is convert from 24 volt to 12 volt. This is called a step down converter. And what this will do, you can see it written there, it will go, it will change my 24 volts to 12 volt. And then that goes up to a fuse block. That's where all of my 12 volt wiring will come out of. And I'll be able to run through uh, all the 12 volt wiring through the cabin. So it'll have, each one of those circuits will have their own fuse as well. But that's it. I mean, it's, uh, it looks very complicated, but trust me, it's very easy. Even a cat could do it, couldn't you? He watches it for me, makes sure everything is safe. Um, but yeah. I'll take you out and show you the battery bank, how I've, how I've got it. But that's the components of my solar system. And I will tell you, I run my refrigerator all night. I run lights. I run, charge everything. Um, and these batteries have never been below 12.3. They've never been below 70%. And as long as you take care of the batteries, they'll take care of you. You know, the, everybody laughs. Oh, those are cheap Walmart batteries. Um, all of you people that remember uh, when I had the RV out here, I set up a, a, a small solar system. I was experimenting it with two 100-watt panels. And I had two of those batteries from 2014. I still use those in the shed at home. Um, do they hold as long a charge? Probably not. But you know what? They work great in my shed. For all my lighting in the shed and charging my batteries and stuff, they work great. So, you know, if you take care of the stuff, you, you, don't, have, you, you don't have to worry about it. I, you know, I didn't have 300 bucks. You know, I don't have 800 or $1,000 by LiPo batteries and all this kind of crap, lithium. You know, this works for me. And like I said, this is a, a, you know, a weekend cabin or, you know, I stay out here for a week at a time. So I didn't need a big giant blown out system. And this works perfectly for me. Um, I watch TV in here at night. Uh, like I said, it does everything I needed to do. I can run my laptop off of it. And I've never been below 70% on my batteries. So this works. Take your time putting it together, use the right gauge of wire, and you're going to have no problems at all. Now let me take you around and show you the batteries. Okay, this is my battery bank at the back of the cabin. That's where the wires come out uh, from the cabin. These are Walmart uh, Everstart Max deep cycle batteries um they're 115 amp hours i have these also these are 12 volt batteries i have them wired in series to make 24 volt batteries so i basically have three 24 volt batteries now that are 115 amp hours those are wired in parallel <laughs> So again, series and parallel, that's what this is, and they have worked 
flawlessly. Um, I'm going to be bringing out a, a jug of distilled water with me next time. Just so I can look and, and, you know, make sure everything's good in the batteries. But for eight months through the heat of last fall, the freezes of this winter, they have worked just fine. Uh, because they're uh, flooded lead acid batteries, I don't have them in the house or in the cabin. They stay outside here. Eventually, this pallet that I'm on... Um, is going to get closed in and all of my equipment that you see inside the cabin is going to be out here. Um, I have a 30 amp receptacle right here that is wired to my uh, service panel inside the cabin. Uh, when I was running the generator, if I run it to run the air conditioner, I'll plug it in here. Uh, and my service panel is to all the plugs and switches inside the cabin. But once I move all of my solar equipment out here, I can plug directly into that out of my um, inverter. can go into that, and then that will power up the cabin. So that's the battery bank for you. That's where I've been clearing more land. I'm um, clearing back through there, knocking all this out. <laughs> but our new fire pit's going over there, picnic table and everything over on that side. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that little tour of the solar system and how easy it really is to do and how well it has worked for me so far. Uh, this is Joe again out here at the off-grid cabin at St. Bernard Acres. Uh, I want to invite you to subscribe again. If not, if you aren't, uh, remember to like, share, comment on this. You know, leave me a... you got any questions about the solar, I'm an amateur, but if I can't answer it, I've got subscribers that have helped me out a lot. They're knowledgeable, and they'll answer questions for you as well. But... I'm heading out of here. I got Creamer taken care of. I got to get back and take care of Max now. Nick's out of town for a few days, so there's nobody there to take care of him while Gail's at work. I'm out.